All right, I believe I have ascertained what's making that wobble sound when I become demonstrative and do my dad slamming my fist on the table. So hopefully you won't hear that anymore. It would really be good if I just sort of didn't touch the table while I'm talking, you know? That'd probably be better. Let's see if I can keep my hands between my legs. All right. I used to get on my mother for that. She'd talk with her hands. But you need to have all that. I'm your son, we're in the living room, you're bitching about how your day went, like you bitch every day. Oh. But I was the only person she had. Or something, who was still living at home because he'd made such a mess of his life that she had gotten him and the government in, and literally in the mail room was a GS2, yeah. So, yeah. But, oh my golly gee, I'm a man, okay? I don't want to hear this inter-office intrigue every night, ladies. Not every night after, no. Ah. My mom. My angel. I have this friend, he got this, he's like a pug He's like a lover of pugs. Hey, why do Polish dogs have snub noses? It's from chasing parked cars. So, I guess you could call him like a pug, uh, a pug good Samaritan do-gooder. I think he like fosters. <laughs> Older pugs or something that's got like tumors and stuff, and, you know, are gonna die soon anyway. So he gets this Lance Armstrong pug. Yeah, one testicle wonder. And uh, he names him Charlie Black. Dog's all black. I ain't gonna lie, this dog is cute. My friend's like, yeah, I might even have him bred. I'm like, can you do that with one testicle? How does that work? I mean, you know, you know, you don't even want to go there in your mind thinking how you're going to collect, you know, enough semen. You don't want to go there. I, I'm not going there, but I just put you there. Sorry. Not really. And this dog is cute. Well, he names him Charlie Black, and I'm like, I want to do the old uh, point counterpoint, you know, where Jane Curtin uh, presents... Uh, her argument very in a very professional and bullet point format and and Dan Aykroyd simply answers her with Jane you ignorant slut at the time it seemed like it was good humor I guess it still is maybe except for the slut part I wonder if that'll trigger the AI slut 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 let's see what happens uh, yeah so you, I guess you could call him a uh, a lover of pugs, certainly. He gets this one, his latest act with, and this I don't think is a rescue. I think the boy may have parted with some money here. For one testicle, whatever, dude, that's your thing. If you know, whatever, I don't know. I don't tell you. If you're gonna, you're happy to buy a dog with one test, that's your thing. All right, you know, I'm really fixating on these. Do you know what mountain oysters are? Yeah, those are testicles. Yeah, I was first introduced to that in the uh, Baltimore market. Yep, the open air market in Baltimore. I was introduced to it. I did not say I partook of it. Okay. I did, however, the goat, but not his penis. Even though it was offered to me, the goat that I slew with my Hispanic uh, family, my familia. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, you could call this guy a lover of, you know. And this little bug here. I, oh, I already know, because I have more photos in my, thank goodness I bought an I, I Pro or iPhone 13 with a terabyte uh -huh, of memory, because I'm going to need it, it looks like. This guy is sending me picture after picture. Oh, my goodness gracious, this dog is cute. <gasps> so, he names him Charlie Black. I'm like, dude, really? 
I mean, what's he talking about? That what's that, Mister Black, Charlie, Brad Pitt, or something? That bomb, you know, with Pert. I don't know. Something about Mister Black, Charlie Black, Evening Black, I don't know, black dress. I don't put a dress on. I don't know. So he names him Charlie Black, and I'm like, did really? Fortunately, I'm kind of fluid with words, and they come to me. And I looked at one of the dogs and said, that is Mr. It, capital M, lowercase r, period, space, uppercase D, Andy. Mr. Dandy. Now, my friend was reticent at first. He was reluctant. Only because he knew he was, yeah, he was bested by a colleague. Absolutely bested. Okay, He knew that. And he has since reluctantly started to refer to his, oh, the center of his life. Oh, it's just, it's, you know, it's Valley Girl and gag me with a spoon time. It is. However, look at me, Uncle Johnny. I know, Uncle, I am Uncle Johnny. I know, right? How, I'm not even going to show you my library and my phone because it's going to be kind of like, uh, where's your dog? I'll be like, well, that's not my dog. And you're going to look at me strange and I wouldn't blame you a little bit. Okay, so moving on. That's enough about Mr. Dandy. <clears throat> I need to put my glasses back on because I actually wrote a couple of things down to sort of keep me on an even whirlwind. A whirlwind with a purpose. Jim. Madness may not have a purpose, but it has a goal. Think of me as madness. I guess you can really, because I serve no purpose. I myself serve no purpose, but I do have a goal. Ah, uh, six, maybe seven years old. I used to have these glasses and they probably came on a box top. You know, you collect 15 box tops and add, you know, uh, cal uh, calculated for today's uh, uh, dollars, you know, $87 and 15 box tops of cereal that you really didn't like that much anyway. But I had to have these these glasses, man, these sunglasses. These sunglasses were of oh, almost, I want to say, now this is 60s, late 60s, maybe peaking into the 70s. I want to say it was made of a sort of a, reminiscent of a Bakelite. I know, I know, that's just me now, sorry. It's like a white uh, plastic. And in the corners, above the two eyes, there were six shooters. Uh, what do you call, you know, like old style revolvers and they call them six shooters. So they, they were guns, okay, cowboy guns, sort of molded into the plastic frame up on the corners. And I remember the lenses that I was to look through almost had like a green hue to them, like they were polarized, but for God only knows what, because they were like this green hue, I remember. Because when I wore those movie, when I wore those glasses, those glasses that I've just described to you, I became like a James Bond type because I had these sunglasses with six. I was a Moomy, a Moomy Dar. I think that was the best I could come up with, Moomy Dar. That was as close as I could get to movie star. God, I was an intelligent child. I mean, look how many years it's taken for my humility to overtake my sheer raw, just intellect. I think I had one of them secret code rings too. That was probably, oh, I don't know, some other damn cereal I didn't really like. And then it was also, the, you know, you could get, they, they used to emboss, they used to imprint, somehow they did this, records, 45s, that you could separate from the box, I want to say, from the box itself. And you could play on your photograph. 
I know people are like 45s. What is that phonograph? <laughs> Yeah, I remember those, the records. Probably something of the day. You know, who knows? Teen beat something or other. Okay, now, the real reason for this post. Because, like I said in the past, I, I want to try and put myself into the machine, but it would be terribly selfish of me to do that if I didn't tell you about the very reason I'm able to put myself into the machine. The God of my understanding. So. Let's go for the heart of the host now. What I try to do, I think, is I try to take things that I've learned both from the Bible uh, and other things I've learned from the world. And I try to... You know, I try to get it to all interface as best I can for me and make it fit and work. So, I mean, I... Yeah, I remember... Where are we at? 11 minutes. Okay. Kindergarten? Mrs... Was her name Mrs. Black? Black hair, black eyes, looking down at me, trying to teach me that it's wrong to take something from another child's, from another student's, whatever the word is she used. She's speaking to a five-year-old now or something. From another person's cubbyhole and claim it as my own, that that's wrong. And I remember her looking at me with this look of seriousness. And I remember thinking, yeah, sounds good. I'm pretty sure I already knew that, but yeah, I knew what I did was wrong. Yeah, I'm going to stand, I'm going to sit here and look back at you like you have my undivided attention. And then as soon as this episode's over, I'm pretty sure I'm going to kind of forget it. I'll just make sure I don't do it again in front of you. Yeah, that, that, that little vignette within a vignette wasn't so happy. But it's me. At five. Yeah, the graham crackers, kindergarten, and the little, what is that, cup of milk? Is that the correct size? I don't believe... Metric was listed on the cartons at the time. A cup of white milk. Lay your head down, take a nap. I always kind of hated that. And I remember always waking up, you know, with probably slobber on me. I just didn't like having to take a nap. But I did have to take a nap. I was so young. I didn't like it, but I had to. I guess that's why it goes long now. I'll just go for days and days and days, and eventually my body will say, no, just... And I might sleep man, around the clock. Yeah. Like eating, I find sleeping an annoyance. Okay. The main reason for this post. He had those little car, card stock, uh, Cigar box. Uh, well, or cigar boxes that may have been given to you by your parents. Like my dad probably I grabbed one of his. And you were able to keep a small box at your desk. Uh, first grade. And yeah, and you had the kind of desk and you had the yeah, you had the kind of desk with the flat and then boom, and then boom. So it's really like a big rectangle in front of you. You could put your hands in there. It's like a big open space underneath, concealed. Oh, yeah. And I would put my little box in there. So it'd be like a tent within a tent, holy of the holies. <laughs> holy of holies. No, only not. Not at all. And in that box, I might have some things that, I don't know, glue, an eraser, 
I probably had a couple little toys in there. She warned me. And then she took it from me. It was a car. And I remember that if you, if you, if you held it just right it, with a light source behind it, the sun or whatever, the headlights would come on. Excuse me. Cool, man. I couldn't stop playing. She took, she lifted it from me. She took it. And I want to say this is somewhere around the beginning of the year. School year. So what am I? Six, seven years old, something. And I remember at the end of the school year, she returned that car to me. Now, it was probably taken away from me in September-ish, maybe October-ish. I know it was the beginning of the year and it was given to me in June, returned to me in June. Do you think that I remembered that car as a six-year-old boy seven, six or seven year old boy from say October 15th to June 15th. Do you think I held a torch for that car? When she presented me that car, it was like a found treasure. And I enjoyed it all over again. I wonder when that son we, 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 we've heard of, of the two sons, I wonder if that son, when he left his father, I wonder did the father write him off And when the son returned, the prodigal son, that's the one I'm speaking of. And when the son returned, the father rejoiced. Now I had forgotten all about that toy in them five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever the hell it is. Nine months, eight, nine months. I forgot all about that car. Do you think the father forgot about the son for all of those probable years? My son was dead. Now he lives. That would be another example for me, for me, of selfless love. Selfless love. Because I got to believe that the whole time that son was gone, that father hurt. Probably for years, that father lamented the loss of that son. How much more, if I may borrow loosely, Rabbi, how much more will God do for you when you are returned to him? How much joy, happiness, will he feel in that moment when you return yourself to him? Will he not pull out the best beast? I'm getting really into the Bible now, sorry. Will he pull out the best beast? Will he not break out the credit card, buy some serious grub, okay? 
We all going out tonight to the best five star around this mofo. I don't care. We're going we're gonna to turn this credit card into hot wax. He gave no concern to anything other than the fact that his son, who was dead, now lives. Can you imagine the joy he's going to feel for you when you finally let down that wall and walk towards him? Just one step towards him. That's all it takes. Peace.